Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Understanding Human Design podcast. I am super excited to have with me here today one of the presenters at the upcoming International Human Design Conference, Betsy Batista. Betsy is a healer, a storyteller, an intuitive, a transformational coach, and she's been on a path of awakening all of her life, but certainly has been on a much more accelerated path in the last few years. She was living abroad in a conflict zone starting at the really baby age of 19. I think of that as my babies are like older than that now. (laughs) And uh, developed cancer, diagnosed with cancer as a new mom when her baby was just a couple months old at the age of 28. She knows firsthand from her experiences the importance of healing our past and integrating the lessons and wisdom that allow us to serve at our highest level and it's her life's mission to heal trauma on every level throughout the planet and she works intimately with people through the work that she does with human design and as a quantum alignment system practitioner among many of the other things that she does. She's got classic light worker syndrome, right? I always say. Yeah. (laughs) We are the Renaissance people, right? That we read about in school. We're all Renaissance healers. So welcome, Betsy. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So I want to dive right in because you did a quantum alignment show a couple of months ago that got so much attention and feedback and really, you know, set off, I think, a very powerful dialogue in our human design community about the human design of activism, which is part of what you're going to be talking about. Tell us a little bit about how does your human design influence the way you become an activist or how you become an activist? Yeah, so um, I personally think that the process of awakening is really the first step for any of us. And I think we live in a time where an unprecedented number of people are, as they say, waking up, some by choice and some not. (laughs) So um, I would say my first awakenings were certainly not by choice. And now I really lean into them. And I just, if we're going to create the world of, as you say, equitable, sustainable peace that we are seeking and all dreaming of, I think, then we have to be willing to lean into the uncomfortable places and we have to be willing to look in the mirror and say, you know, where am I out of integrity and where is the world out of integrity? Where am I perhaps complicit in that? How can I help to heal it? And I think that, I mean, our human design chart gives us this incredible roadmap to coming home to ourselves and to our authentic selves um, to really reveal the places where we might be out of alignment and how we can make those shifts to tap into those higher purposes. So, so okay, I want I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here because right. think, <laughs> there's there's I think an energy in the community of not just activism, but I think in our in, in a community of healers where we want to give, we want to serve, we want to take action so much that I find a lot of times we erode away our own foundation to a certain degree. We push, we burn out. We're not engaging in actions in a way that supports our energy. But yet when we say, okay, go work on yourself first, we react like, oh, well, that's selfish. Why would I do that? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that, um, I feel like that's the push me, pull you always of healing and awakening is like the I and the me and then the collective we and Um, as you are writing about so perfectly in your new um, quantum human book, which I'm so grateful to have gotten a sneak peek at, um, you know, the the solar plexus mutation and the evolution that we're in right now is looking at how we can move from looking at the I and the self for how do I just serve me and how does that self serve the collective? Mm -hmm. And um, so I think And this has been a theme in my life this year is like, how do I hold it with both hands? You know, like, how can it be about, yes, I have to do my own personal work, because if I don't, then I'm still unconsciously contributing to the underlying problems because they're unconscious. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, like you kind of brought up that that path of martyrdom that I think so many light workers and healers fall into by default, because we so want to give and serve that we forget to take care of ourselves and you can't serve from an empty cup. I know this. 
I still work on this on a daily basis um, <laughs> of healing that kind of martyrdom pattern. Um, if we're burned out, we are no good to anyone. So, you know, how do you do the personal work that's necessary? And how do you then translate that into actions that impact the whole? And that's a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in my talk at conference is, you know, how do we find what the actions are that we're even called to? Because we all have different Mm -hmm. uh, energies and we work and function differently. So not everyone is designed to be like out in the streets protesting every day for 10 hours and all like, you know, some people just, that's not their role. And so it's, how do you find first, how do you find what you want to make an impact on? Because mm -hmm. frankly, this world needs activism in so many ways in so many areas right now. Um, it's never just one thing and everything is connected. How do you find what you're meant to do? And then how do you find the way in which your energy can work sustainably to impact that thing? Because if you hit the pavement for days and days and days and are just going, going and then burn out, then, you know, like I said, you're just done. Like you can't keep serving. So it's both. So you're a generator. I am. How do you personally take care of your energy so that it stays sustainable and you're finding your right place of activism? Um, honestly, this is something that starts at home for me. Uh, I'm a mother, I have two young children, and I feel really lucky to have a partner who very much um, is non-traditional. <laughs> I would say we have a very non-traditional relationship and a very non-traditional life. And um, from my own experience, just as a woman and a mother, I think there's a lot of patterns that got handed down to me about feeling like I need to do everything. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is not sustainable. And so it's really for me starting at home of finding the balance with my partner and seeing how do we hold everything again with both hands, like how do we support one another in balancing our home, caring for our children, doing our work in the world. He forces me to sleep. <laughs> like I would stay up all night, you know, if you didn't say you got to come to bed. Um, but yeah, for, for me, it starts with energetic integrity, quite honestly, because I also have a defined will center so I can just push through and do it. Um, and that's kind of an Achilles heel of mine. And so sometimes, honestly, it takes support from outside of me for people to be like, you got to slow down or you got to take care of yourself. And I think that's why you see that some of the most effective activism is community organizing, because we can't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone brings a different gift to the table. Everyone needs that support from others to support them in whatever way their energy needs show up. And so it's going to take all of us showing up as we can and allowing ourselves to receive the support from those who are there to give it. Mm, mm, powerful. So I, I, I want to just explore something because you shared with me and shared with everyone in your bio that you've had some pretty cataclysmic wake up calls in the last beginning of your life as a young adult. Talk to me about why do you think you have these really intense experiences. I mean, becoming a new mother and then suddenly discovering, oh, hey, by the way, I have cancer. That's a pretty cataclysmic event. And I'm wanting to be really careful and not say, you created this, because I think there's, that's a little bit less than black, white formula. But talk to me a little bit about what was that experience like for you in the sense of it becoming a catalyst for your awakening and why do you think you needed to be woken up at that point? Was it having a baby enough? God. <laughs> Only in heaven. Um, <laughs> um, so I guess in, in one sense, I want to be really delicate and make sure that I speak to the fact that I think that there can sometimes be some spiritual bypassing that happens in the community around saying, you know, like you were saying, you know, oh, you created this or, you know, if you just changed your mindset, you wouldn't, you know, have endured X, Y, Z. And I do believe in that in some sense, absolutely. And I believe that there are certainly some systems and structures that the world is set up in that create more struggle for some people than others. And so, um, I just want to be really mindful of naming that, that in no way am I saying that, you know, any struggle that you endure, any hardship is because, you know, you created it or you called it in. And, you know, again, holding it with both hands, right? Um, that and 
on, on my spiritual path, I think I really did need it to be jolted awake. I was very much on a, like a conveyor belt of sorts of, you know, I'm going to go out and get the good job and earn the money and get the 401k and do all the right things. And, um, I, I, the wake up call that I had around age 19, where I was living in a, a conflict zone and I, I had honestly grown up really sheltered, uh, in a very, very sheltered Midwestern suburban white community. And, um, I hadn't seen much of the world and I thought the world was a certain way and I thought people were a certain way. And when I was living abroad, I witnessed firsthand some of the, let's call it the underbelly of what humanity is dealing with, of the ways in which we harm one another, of the ways in which we are truly unkind, of the ways in which we do not treat each other fairly. And it broke my heart. It really, I felt like I'd been lied to. I felt like um, I just felt like the world didn't make sense anymore. And I didn't know what to do with that. And I went through a really, really difficult personal period and ultimately ended up going to therapy and some other things, but I didn't, I didn't really deal with it. I didn't like go through the stuff to get like the integrated messages that I was meant to get so that I could then go heal the brokenness of the world. Instead, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to just get through all this pain and get myself back to functioning and go back to life the way I was taught I'm supposed to live it. And the universe was like, sorry, no, <laughs> there was a, a message we were trying to send you. You didn't get it the first time. Let's try again. So, um, yeah. And listen, I mean, when I first learned about my human design, I have some energetics in my chart that... Um, are very much about awakening and undergoing honestly some shocking experiences in order to evolve my own consciousness forward so that I can do what I came here to do. And um, it was almost a relief to learn that when I saw my chart, I was like, oh, you know, I didn't do anything wrong to experience these things. But um, I think that the cancer was like wake up 2.0. It was like, mm -hmm. you're not going to listen. So we're going to make you. And that was the one that got through for me. Um, when I was looking into the face of my infant daughter and I was like, I refuse to not be here for the rest of your life. Like I'm not dying right now. And I, I went on my own journey of healing and created my own way. And through that, um, really encountered some incredible spiritual tools, healing tools that I then was like, oh, this is what I'm here to do. And I had to do it for myself first. And I hadn't really healed myself the first time. And I think there were big pieces of myself that I needed to heal that second time. Um, and awakening never really ends, I don't think. Like, you never, like, get to it. <laughs> I know. I keep trying. I keep negotiating. I'm like, come on, universe, I'm done, right? Like, I did enough now. Um so there's no destination, and I've really learned that. But I think that we either answer the call or we don't. And if we don't answer it the first time, we're going to get another call and another call and another call until we answer the phone. Um, so that's what it was for me. And um, I honestly think that, again, there are some circumstances that people are just endure that others get to avoid because of certain life circumstances and there is an imbalance there and that's part of what we are going into activism to correct right mm -hmm. so that that imbalance can be healed so that everyone can truly experience what equity feels like and have a chance for an equal shake in life um but i also have learned through my own spiritual journey of healing that um and you talk about this a lot with the quantum alignment system. I mean, so much of life is the meaning that we give to it and what we make of it. And, you know, I could have looked at the cancer journey and been like, oh, woe is me. You know, I went through this terrible thing and God hates me and, you know, <laughs> all of that. And um, I've reached a point now where I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful because I wouldn't be the person I am right now if I hadn't gone through that. Um, and I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be talking to you and I wouldn't be connected with this community. Um, well, maybe I would, maybe I would have just gotten another call in another five years. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, well, thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. And I think that's, you know, I think in a lot of ways, that's the, 
the theme of 2020, right? The 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 uh, spiritual Jumanji we're playing this year, um, and you know that we are being individually and collectively woken up by the challenges that we face, and of course you embody this so beautifully by sharing your own story and uh you know show people that path to as you just said to really leaning into it instead of shutting it down and avoiding it and backing away from it so that the universe has to keep calling louder and louder so i think we're in the middle of a pretty loud call anyway and so loud yeah a great you know i think it's, i love that you love your experience now and i think I think there will be a time when we will all look back at this year and go, okay, there was this was the there was a before, and there was an after, and we gotta love this thing that cooked, that mm -hmm. started the fire for what we create in the after. So, you know what though, and I like to remind people of this too because, I mean, I'm like five or six years out now from when I went through the cancer journey, for example. When I was in it, I didn't love it so much, you know. Like, yeah, <laughs> like. I was like, I have cancer. I'm in an awakening. This is amazing. You know, I was like, I had to go through the muck, you know, and yeah. we're in the muck right now and we don't have to like it, <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. and we don't always have to feel so awakened and, you know, in love with it. We can throw our hands up and curse the heavens sometimes and wonder if we're ever going to get through it. And I know I did, you know, and it's only in retrospect when we look back on the path that we took, do we have the context? and the perspective to even find the gratitude, but we have to get through it first. You know, like I had to heal from the cancer first or I would have died and I wouldn't have been here to do right. the rest of it. Right. And, or we have to get through this first. We have to find our way along this path. We have to support each other in this healing. We have to reckon with the problems that are at hand that have been created by hundreds of years of human civilization living a certain way. Um, and then, like you said, you know, we'll be able to look back and be like, oh, what a gift that we went through all that mud and muck and turmoil to get to this part in this new world that we've created. But, you know, I think that sometimes, especially in spiritual communities, there's like a lot of pressure for people to like, be grateful now and like, embrace oh, it, love it. <laughs> love it all. And I'm like, oh, sometimes I got to just grit my teeth and be like, we're doing it. We're doing it. I got to just remember we're doing it. <laughs> Totally, totally. And I think that's such a great message, too, because I, you know, I keep telling everybody emotional frequencies, which are the energies with which we create, they, they move. If they're not moving, you're dead, right? <laughs> and because they're moving, it's built into the system that you're going to have crappy days and it's okay. It's the baseline that matters, not the day to day fluctuation of, hey, today sucks. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It sucks it'll get better. You'll bring it back to baseline and it's not the end of the world. And the challenges, learning to be resilient in yes. the face of the changes that are coming. So I appreciate that so much. So Betsy is going to be speaking, I think on Saturday at our conference. And uh, is there any last minute things you want to share with our listeners today, Betsy? I guess I just want to really encourage people that, um, to maybe do that thing of holding it with both hands, honestly, to know that we're in the muck and to keep your eye set on the horizon, you know, and to know that we're doing this for a reason and that, you know, going through this process of coming back into awareness of how your energies function and your design and your innate gifts is going to help you find the area that you yourself are meant to impact. I think so much of us, like you were saying with how we just want to dive into everything. It's like, I want to help everything. You know, I want to heal racism and climate change and animal cruelty and child, you know, like there's, there's like a laundry list of things that need attention right now. And everyone is going to have their one or two areas that are going to really call for them. And so attuning to your energies, figuring out how you yourself work, where your heart really lies, and then really connecting into that community because we got to do this together mm -hmm. and creating the community support around this activism, you know, is, is the beginning of the building of the new world because it's the community and the communal support that is going to 
create the sustainable new communal systems that we need in the new world itself. So they're going to translate. So I just be compassionate with yourself and be graceful with yourself and allow yourself to be on the journey. And um, I hope that you'll join us at conference. And um, if you want to learn more about how to align your energies with your activism, I hope you'll join me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Betsy. And thank you all for listening to us today. Thanks, Karen.